Well, hello and Happy New Year, guys. I wanted to go over our next part of the Pop Art Shoes assignment. This is going to be a pen and ink assignment, which is going to come before you guys add color. So what y'all are going to be using on this assignment is your Micron Pigma pens. And uh, this is going to help you guys to decide and to formulate where the darks and the lights are going to be. And it's going to just build a strong foundation when you actually add color on top of this in a future assignment, you're going to know, um, you know, where or what types of colors if you're going to have dark medium light in certain spots now there may be certain places that you will be just leaving black and that's okay but um this project the the final version of this project is meant to have really bright bold pop arty kind of looking colors so um like i said it is a lot easier to lay down the value in pen before actually adding color and the plan is to add color in your marker pack that you guys have so I'm gonna go back and show you guys just uh, a drawing of the shoe and we're gonna talk a little bit about the stages of what you're going to be doing. So um, this is a very plain <laughs> shoe drawing. It's, it's not a bad drawing. Of course, it doesn't have the background or anything like that on it. Um, what is going to happen with this is you guys are going to be um, to your shoes you're going to add a little bit of a spirit, a personality to your shoes. These already have a little something just because of the design. It's got a checkerboard kind of thing and, and that's great. But what you've got to decide is what kind of personality do you want your shoes to have? And, and in this particular drawing, what I decided to do, and this is, um, if you look at your instruction sheet, this is step four under the instructions, but you're going to be adding something to your shoes that uh, it may reflect a little something of the background, like it might reflect a pattern in the background and it could be on the shoes or it could be coming out of the shoes. Um, you also can or you may need to add movements of lines, either you can kind of see additional lines that I drew coming off and highlighting the shoes graphically here. So we go back to this sort of boring looking shoe. And I do want to show you um, like what I decided to do. So when, when you look at this, you've got really graphic lines coming out of and outlining these shoes. And because I've got these stars right here, I did a little repetition of the stars kind of powing out of <laughs> the shoe. So it is almost like a comic strip sort of thing that is going on with this particular drawing there. So you've got to think about what is the soul, what is the spirit of your shoe. Your shoes, if you can think about them as being people, almost person-like, personified, then that's going to help you when you start to, to draw these things. So keep that in mind um, whenever you're actually starting with these shoes. These shoes are going to be the stars of the show. They're going to have, although there's a lot going on in my background, it's going to have the boldest lines and um, it's going to be the most aggressive thing that you're going to see in your actual drawing. So the first thing that you guys are going to do whenever you start off in this, and, and I actually did uh, most of the first stage right here, you're going to take your marker, your 01, and that's your smallest tip. And you're just going to take those, that marker, and you're going to outline your, your whole drawing. And what I would recommend, you can just do like a plain line on all of it. And then you can go back and especially on areas that are on the shoe or around the shoe, you can go back and either use your 01 
or you can go, you know, to your O3, which is kind of a medium grade, or uh, if you have a, a thicker lined area, you can use your O5, and you can go through that and add some thick and thin areas. Uh, I will say, usually, whenever I'm adding thick lines to things, let's just pretend like I did all these thick lines right here surrounding my shoe. When usually if you have an area, let's just say for instance, you've got a corner, usually what I'll do in these corners is I may thicken up um, the corner line area and then I may gradually like taper it off coming off of the corner. So if you have like a little crevice or something, um, I may end up thickening that. And then as you come off of that, uh, I may go and uh, make my lines a little bit thinner there. But like I said, the majority of the really bold lines are going to happen um, in your shoes. So you know, think about those things. So you may have even coming off of the shoe, you might end up, this is kind of a little corner line and the little poof <laughs> there. And you might decide to thicken up this here and then leave this where the widest area would be uh, thin. So you are with your, with your lines, with your stylized lines that you're creating you are, in a sense, um, value shading without actually adding pointillism or cross hatching or anything like that at this moment. So I've got this little corner of this little star right here. I'm making it thick just in the corner. And then I'm gonna leave the rest of the remaining lines um, and just have those to be thin. Um, if you have any area, like um, this right here, the checkerboard, you have something overlapping, like a little cloud-looking shape overlapping your checkerboard, you might have a little thickness that happens right there. So on your checkerboard, you've got, um, if you look here, it gets rather dark, but before you get this really dark, what you're going to end up doing and what I did is you have that little area of overlap. You've got to decide what part of um, this checkerboard, of the black checkerboard, is going to have the, the largest shadow on it. And usually you're gonna have an area where there is overlap. So I'm outlining that. And I may make my corners Although my corners are light-ish, not totally light. I may end up making that just have a little bit of a thickness there. So um, we're reaching uh, about eight and a half minutes right here. So I'm gonna stop this and I'm going to end up making another video that's going to talk a little bit about layering and it's going to talk a little bit about um, the hatching, cross hatching, and pointillism that you guys are going to be doing on the next part of the assignment.